I feel that uh, since you have those fantastic cheetah on the hunt, we couldn't help but reciprocate with something. And uh, I want to take you to a leopard in a tree over there, but it's not a real leopard, it's just a leopard orchid. And it's one of VM's favorite plants, and so we thought that we'd go and see if it's flowering. This time of the year, uh, there's a good chance that the orchid has some flowers. I know all the other orchids have, and I want to go and see if it does. They're quite nice flowers in actual fact. And um, I don't even know about this one. Oh, VM says he doesn't even know about this one, and he keeps tabs on all the big orchids around here. They're very nice things to do. Now, <clears throat> orchids are quite weird things in that they don't actually use the plant that they're sitting on as a host, so they're not saprophytic. Um, what they do is they create this mesh in this basket of very fine roots, and uh, that catches a bunch of detritus, bark and dust in the air, and from that the orchid actually derives all its nutrients. So it just uses the elevated position for sunlight, and, that, and that's it. It doesn't use it for, for anything else. And a big, big orchid like this is probably in the region of about 20 years old already. You get them bigger than that, they grow to about double the size. And uh, when they get to about that size, it's about maximum that, they, that, that, that they'll then get to. This one doesn't have any flowers on yet, unfortunately. But at the bottom of it, you can quite clearly see that basket that it grows for itself. And it'll use that basket not only for support, but then also to trap any airborne dust particles, any leaf litter that falls around uh, from the actual tree, and you can you can actually see inside that that orchid's basket, you can see a bunch of dead leaves, and they they would have blown in there with the wind. And as they decompose, they catch water, and uh, and that's how it'll get its. Um, its nutrients. Now Chastity, you say, yeah, you've been wanting to see an orchid in the wild for so long. I'm glad we could show it to you then, Chastity. We dedicate this orchid to you. It is your orchid. We'll call it Chastity's orchid. From now on, considering that VM didn't even know this was here and needs to give it a needs to give it a name, we name all good things here. <clears throat> this is another thing. Since we're here, come and say hello to this tree. This is a Tambuti tree. Actually, is it? Yes, it's a Tambuti tree. Not the typical blocked bark uh, lower down, and that's because this tree is fairly old. It's not the largest of the tambuetis that we have out here. This is about half the width of the largest tambueti we can see, but definitely an old guy. You're looking at a couple of hundred years old already for this particular tree, and uh, and they grow the most fantastic shapes. They grow nice straight up. Um, and they grow in thickets, and they're used for a variety of different things. Generally speaking, though, the sap uh, is used to treat um, to treat infestations of worms and parasites in cattle, and to keep wounds clean. So we saw that lioness last night with that massive uh, gaping wound on her on her back leg. Um, if that was uh, in a cow, in a in a, in a, in a in a one of the cattle that the local guys uh, store their wealth in, uh, is in cattle, and it had been horned by another bull, for instance, they would drill into this with their knives, collect the sap in some grass, and then drip the sap into that wound, and that will clear the wound of any parasites, or any fly maggots, or anything, it'll also burn off all the dead tissue, this, this is quite caustic, the, uh, the sap that grows inside here. That's just one of the, one of the many uses of a Tambuiti tree.